If you're going to walk in darkness and you're going to kind of walk on the edge between holiness and not, in, not walking in holiness, you, you will get to the place where you might just start justifying in your head, hey, what I'm doing here is okay. And you've got, you got all your reasons. But you know what's happened? You've turned from God and you believed a lie. And God even speaks about that. About giving them up to a reprobate mind. And that's why humanity is in the condition that it's in today. Because they rejected God. And they exchanged the, the, the glory and the truth of God for a lie. That's it. It's, that, it's just as simple as that. You go home and you read the Word and, and, and God speaks to you and stirs your heart. He's speaking truth to you. Father, sanctify them with Thy truth. Thy Word is truth. That's what I love about the Scriptures. I know when I'm there, I'm in the truth. I don't have to worry about getting deceived or getting misled. Now, let's turn to John chapter 19, the very next chapter. I want to read through this. Uh, sorry, Luke, excuse me. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. If I had time, I'd sing the song. It's a great song. He was a wee little man. <laughs> Which was the chief among the publicans. <clears throat> and he was rich. Here's another rich guy. And you know why? Because he was a thief. <laughs> Not saying all rich people are thieves, but when they are a tax collector, and when they're a tax collector and they're rich, I have my doubts. Okay, I just did my taxes tonight. Don't want to talk about it. Don't ask me about it. No, it was actually good this time. Verse 3, And he sought to see Jesus, who he was. And he could not for the press, so that means the crowd, because he was little of stature. He was just a little guy. He was short. And so he wanted to get up into a tree to see Jesus coming. <clears throat> and he ran before and climbed up into... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking ahead of myself here. Verse 4, And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree uh, to see him for he was to pass that way. Now can you imagine this scenario here? This, this tax collector, people didn't like them. People didn't like the publicans because they take the money. It would be like what we think of the IRS. If you say IRS to most people, they go, you know, they get that look in their face. Well, you know, the IRS is made up of people, aren't they? And I don't know if I'd ever say that I worked for the IRS, even if I did. <laughs> I'd have to think of something else. But that's how they viewed him. But notice, Look at this man compared with the rich young ruler. The one we just read. They're both coming to see Jesus. They both knew they had a need. The rich young ruler's need was, uh, I need, how do I obtain eternal life? And even after Jesus gave him some of the commandments, which he said he did, he still knew, he, still knew he wasn't right. He still knew that, hey, I'm, something's still not right here. How do I inherit eternal life? So you see Zacchaeus here, and he's doing the same thing. He's got to see Jesus. And he was so desperate to see Jesus, excuse me, that he went up a tree. Verse 5, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him, and he said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for this day I must stay at your house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, the people saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. Isn't that a, quite a paradox? People saying that, right? You know, you know what they said about Jesus? They, they said to Jesus' disciples, they said, you know, why does your master eat with the publicans? Why does he eat with, with, with the sinners? He's a friend of sinners. You know, Jesus was a friend of sinners. He wasn't afraid to talk to a sinner. For that was the whole purpose in which he came. Right, beloved? If it wasn't for sinners, we would go on up by now. Our mission would be done. You know, have an altar call, have people come down and get saved and bonk them on the head and send them on home. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not done. Our mission's not done because there's still sinners. And who do we have in us? We have the Savior. So sinners have one need, and that's the Savior. That's the greatest need. 
You may have come here tonight and you might not know Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you may think, my greatest need is, and then fill in the blank, it's money. My greatest need is, where, where, where am I going to get a job? My greatest need is, who am I going to marry? Whatever you think your greatest need is, I'm telling you tonight, the greatest need you have is for Jesus Christ. To be born again into the family of God. You know, Jesus, uh, He's a friend of yours. He's a friend of sinners. And Jesus will take everything that you've done and He will wash you with His blood that He spilled for you on Calvary. The greatest act of love that any man could do for any other, other man. We'd all say that we'd lay down our life for our family and I believe that we all would. And that's noble, but that's expected because we love our family. But who would lay down their life for their worst enemy? Only the love of God does that. And that love of God is here tonight. That lo the love of God is, you've been, ex you've been sensing it tonight. You've been feeling that tug on your heart tonight. And that's the Holy Spirit. When Jesus went into heaven after He rose from the dead, He sent the Holy Spirit. And the, and the Holy Spirit has a job. And that's to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Sin. We're all guilty. Righteousness. We need God's righteousness. We need the righteousness of Christ to go to heaven. And judgment. One day there's going to be a judgment. One day we're all going to stand before the great judge. And believe me, He will give you what's just. And if you know Jesus Christ, you might say, well, I've done so many wrong things, Lord. And Jesus says, but, I, but He's received me. He's believed on me. And He is born again by my blood, by my spirit. And God has canceled. God will cancel your debt. That's the beautiful